Okay, hey everyone. Today I'm going to be filming a video comparing both the Surface Pro 8 and the Surface Pro X. Have a guess which one is which, just by having a glance as to, okay, perhaps this is the Pro 8 Pro X. It's quite hard to tell. I've got them in different colours, so this is the Pro X on the right, and this is the Pro 8 on the left. And as you can see, they do look quite similar. So there is not much difference in terms of look aesthetically. We may notice as here you have fans on the Pro 8 and just to give you a heads up, these are both the base models, standard 128, 8 gigs of RAM, this is the i5 and this is the SQ1, so 8CX modified. So one thing I didn't see many people were mentioning is that the charger for the Pro 8 is down here and then the charger, so if I put it here you can see how much dangle there is and it's not much compared to on the Pro X is up here and you have a lot of dangle so it goes off the table and also you see the USB-C port so you've got two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports over here but on the Pro X you have your USB-C ports over here which you've got two but they're not Thunderbolt so you've got your volume rocker there the same thing on the Pro 8 as well you have you can see you've got your volume rocker and you also have a headphone jack on the Pro 8 at the back, in terms of expansion, you do have the slot so you can expand your memory on here. What you can do on the Pro X though is that you can expand your memory, but also you have a SIM card slot, which is really great because then you have cellular. Now the Pro 8 will be getting cellular, but later on in the year. Over here you have your expansion and then you can have a SIM card. So everything is disabled for startup, Pro X on the right and the Pro 8 on the left. So they both have very quick wake up. So if you, for example, don't use the device, you go 10 minutes away, you come back and it, you need to wake it back up. It's very fast, but let's try a cold start from, you know, just starting the device from shutdown and let's see which one goes faster. It is indeed the Pro 8 in this case I'm going to try to log in too. As you can see, logged in already and I can use the start menu and stuff and the Pro X is still doing some stuff. I can go into the browser and move around. And yeah. And the Pro X they're both very fast to unlock. And yeah, there you go, you can interact. Cool. So, relatively speaking, in everyday life, it's fine as well. You're not always going to be in shutdown mode anyway. Um, you tend to typically go into this mode where you just sort of are on standby and then you want to wake it up. They both wake up very fast like that. And cool. So, that's that compared. Now, in terms of like everyday productivity and work. Let's for example go into a browser. I'm going to browse as guest in both of them. Say for example you want to go to a website and I don't know, you want to load Wikipedia, right? Okay, so if I do a search, see which one's faster. You can go ahead and accept the cookies. Let's go to the pages, three, two, one. I misclicked, let's try that again. English. And they're, you know, they're very, very fast, like, I wouldn't care which one beats what in that scenario, like, yeah, they're both fluid and scrolling, so this is 120 hertz on the left, by default it's set to 60 hertz, and this is 60 hertz, so let's go ahead and launch Word, and we can see them both launching Pro 8 right away into the Word document, Pro X does take some time to launch itself, now this is native I believe for the Pro X as well. Now can these both play back YouTube in 4K is the question. Let's open a new tab for this. Simulating multitasking. Let's go to YouTube. Let's open a video. This is very interesting. We have the same stuff here but very different as well. Let's see day like London Microsoft. So I've got videos uh, in 4K, so I'll load these videos.
Hey, so I did a question on Reddit. So people want me to do this browser test. It's a 52.4, uh, 86.7. You can see the details over here. That's the details. People wanted to know the subsystem for Linux performance. So honestly, both very good. But you know you've got cellular with this. This one you don't. I want to show you the maximum brightness. So we've got maximum brightness on that. And also maximum brightness over there. Now, from glancing, it looks like... So if you are out and about, you will perhaps favour the ProX as well. You've got your 4G LTE connectivity as well. Now I'm going to see how, how low the brightness goes until they're about matched. Natural lighting coming through the window. But yeah, that's about the same. Are you a heavy user where you need the raw performance of being able to... You know, compile applications, have the support of niche applications which may not have support from ARM-based processors and compatibility issues with like, the support to run x64 on this device, or are you looking for so on-the-go cheaper device? Hey, you can just go about and have cellular connection. What I would say is that you're also going to be able to find this device, at least in the UK, around £400 which is a lot cheaper than the Pro 8, which starts around 999 or if you're a student, you can get it for 900 it, You know, in terms of battery life, you will be able to use both of these devices throughout a day on a single charge, which is pretty good. And they both do charge on USB-C. But yeah, that about sums it up for the comparison of these two devices. I wasn't sure really what to compare for all of you. But if you do have any questions, do feel free to put them down below. And if you do want to leave a like, and if you do also want to subscribe, that would be much appreciated. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you and bye-bye.